but I've just always wanted to do this open door thing. Let's just get right into it. My apartment unit is 700 square feet with one bed, one bath, plus washer dryer. It was originally $23.50, but I was able to negotiate my rent down because my unit has the worst view. I have a view of a brick wall and I know that they use my particular unit as a showroom, so I had a little bit of leverage. I paid $2,100 for rent and this includes parking, which I'm coming to realize is pretty rare in LA. I also received one free month upon signing, I'm assuming because of COVID and nobody was moving at the time. Time. So my total net rent is 1925. As soon as you walk into my apartment, there's a little entry nook. I wouldn't call it an entryway because there's nowhere to go. <laughs> I keep a very simple IKEA shoe cabinet. I live by these types of shoe cabinets because they don't take up a lot of space and they house a lot more shoes than you think. Just open them and voila, all of your daily shoes are right here tucked away. I treat the top of the shoe cabinet as my little entryway table. So up here I have some decor items. I have a lint roller, candle, a catch-all for my daily rings, a bottle of Classe Azul because I got this as a gift for my birthday and I don't have a bar cart. I have this acrylic box to keep all of my new masks in. I also have some of my everyday fragrances. The one I've been using nowadays is the Glossier U. I don't know if anyone else deals with this, but I have a bunch of lip tints and colors and bombs that are just floating around everywhere. Usually I can't find them because they're lost in a few different bags. I really want I wanted all of them to be contained in one location and I thought repurposing an old candle jar would be perfect for that on my entryway. Now when I leave the house, I can just grab whatever color that I need and put it in my bag for it that day. Moving on to the bathroom where there's really ugly yellow lighting. <laughs> Okay, so the bad thing about my apartment is that the bathroom door and the entrance clash both doors can't be open at the same time. This is a much bigger bathroom than I am used to. I love how the bathroom mirror stretches across the entire wall of the bathroom, so it just fills out the entire space. We have my medicine cabinet here. This is where obviously I keep all of my makeup, skincare, just everyday products like contact solution, Q-tips. I organized it in this way where these are like the drugstore products, expensive of skincare products and then these are just my daily makeup products there's nothing really special about my shower this is pretty standard shower nothing crazy i hung up some eucalyptus from trader joe's that i probably need to change by now all of my shower products are usually lined up around the tub because i did try to get one of those shower caddy tension rods to put in the corner but when i first moved in i think i got the wrong size so it wouldn't fit and after that i just never revisited that whole situation Situation. So I have everything in my anti-poop arsenal lined up around the toilet. My Aesop Post poo drops. They don't work that well, but it's still an aesthetic. I have a diffuser that smells like Santal. And then I have matches in this cute little cylindrical container that I found at Paquetto. And now we're moving on to the kitchen right behind me. One of the reasons why I actually decided to get this apartment was because it was one of the few layouts with an L-shaped kitchen. All the other apartments I looked at were just straight kitchens and I kind of wanted to avoid that. I want my kitchen to be a little bit more interactive and dynamic and feel more like a nook rather than just an open concept space. If you are familiar with my channel and videos, then you are definitely no stranger to my little coffee corner. I actually ordered my fellow coffee grinder and kettle ahead of moving to LA. I ordered it while I was still in New York and made sure to time it perfectly. I needed my coffee station to be set up on day one. I also have this beautiful Chemex that has lasted me 
through uh, three different apartments now, I think. And then when you open this cabinet, we have matcha, my whisk, regular green tea, my coffee filters. Everything in here has to do with making drinks in the morning. In the sink, I was actually really surprised at because it is very, very wide. And unlike New York, it is way more common for LA apartments to have a disposal. This corner, I have my favorite knife block. I don't actually use the knives that often. It's more for the look. <laughs> and then of course, an air fryer that was gifted to me by Dr. John Yu here on YouTube. So thank you, shout out to Dr. John Yu. This whole cabinet is dedicated to drinkware. I don't know why, but moving to this apartment got me obsessed with drinkware. Never really paid attention to my glasses. If I had a bigger house with more storage, I would definitely be expanding my cup collection. <laughs> Everything in my apartment is pretty much neutral, specifically blacks, grays, natural woods, slash tan, and white. All of my plates and bowls are aligned with that palette. Here is just a standard gas stove, oven, microwave. I treat this cabinet as my pantry. I have my Asian condiments like soy sauce, sesame oil, rice vinegar, whatever I need for cooking. Basically, just all sorts of random things that I can use to whip up something on the fly. This drawer is my junk drawer. This was organized because of this video, but normally it is a shit show in here. I have so many random things. I have my rapid COVID tests, microfiber cloths, poop bags for Rufus. When I don't know where to put something, I put it in here. This is where I keep all my cutlery. The second drawer is where I store all my Ziploc bags, aluminum foil, things like that. And then underneath we have my spice drawer, not really organized in any sort of way. But since it's just me, I, I know where everything is. And on the very bottom is where I keep all my supplements. Because this is not a big apartment and the living space connects directly to the kitchen, I felt like having a square or rectangular dining table would make it feel a lot smaller than it needs to feel. So I wanted to get something round. I really love anything concrete, stone-like, heavy, and basically can withstand any type of weather condition. When I was browsing through Creative Barrel, I was just like, it's the one, it's it. This is a table that will stay with me for a lifetime. The same day that I ordered my dining table, I ordered my chairs from France and Sun. I always, always, always was a fan of the genre chairs, but I could never afford the original genre chairs. So I found this lookalike. These are all pieces that I will keep forever or as long as they last me. Washer dryer and unit, which as a New Yorker, I am always so grateful to have and never take for granted. I used to have to carry bags of laundry three to five blocks down my apartment, especially when it's cold and snowing to do laundry at a laundromat. So I really, I really came up. You guys are no strangers to my living room. This couch that I'm sitting on was the first piece of furniture to arrive in my apartment. I wanted something white, ivory, or off-white, something low to the ground and modular. This couch is from a brand called Coddle. Each arm on this couch has USB ports and outlets. Up here I have a little gallery wall that I kind of just created on the fly. I'm not 100% in love with it, but I feel like it's almost become a signature of mine. It doesn't match the color palette of my apartment except for that abstract figure, but honestly, I'm just a little too lazy to change it. Underneath my feet, I have a CB2 rug. I just love the black asymmetric lines and it just adds a lot of dimension and fun to an otherwise ordinary rug. My biggest investment of my apartment were these travertine cocktail tables from CB2. I think the total for these two coffee tables alone came out to about $1,000, which is 
freaking expensive, but I know that this is a very classic and timeless piece that I will keep forever. I have no intention of getting rid of these. I cherish and love these tables so, 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 so much. And then moving on to the media console. This wall is really short. It is 58 inches. I will never forget it <laughs> because it was just so hard to find something that fit perfectly. I've been having trouble finding a console that'll fit this, but that's going to be last. It's a work in progress. But this was actually a really cheap and really great find. I built it myself and it is from Target. It was only $300 and it kind of is falling apart and crumbling already, even though I don't even touch it that much. But it's still very perfect for this apartment. My rubber plant has new growth, guys. One of the most exciting things. I get asked about this so much, but you can see that there are no wires, right? Behind the TV is a outlet. So I was able to tuck everything away with cable ties and make it look neat. So I got lucky in that sense. I have a pretty big balcony, but I have no intention of furnishing it. If I had a better view and a non-smoking neighbor, I totally would. It's kind of just like a waste of space for now. I have an extra coat closet over here. Up here are some old blankets and linens. This is just a bunch of organized junk up here in this section. I know I live in LA where I don't really need these puffy jackets, but for some reason I can't get myself to donate them or sell them. We can move along into my bedroom. When I was moving, I really wanted and wished for my bedroom to be a technology-free space. But since my apartment is small, that was just not a possibility. There's a recessed wall to create a nook for a desk or a dresser. For me, I needed a desk more than anything because I work from home. I didn't really invest a lot in my bedroom. My bed frame is the only furniture I brought from New York and it's just a very simple acacia wood platform frame from West Elm because I had to stay consistent with the whole walnut mid-century modern wood feel. I got this little dresser. This dresser was actually not planned. This was entirely for functionality. I needed a dresser to put all my socks, underwear, bras in. I actually got this for free from Wayfair because when it was delivered, it was slightly dented and damaged at one of the corners, so I complained and they eventually gave me a refund. You gotta fight for what you want. Um, and up here, I have my jewelry box. And then we have more perfumes over here and then just some decor items. Untouched makeup and the acrylic containers from Muji and some cameras. This duvet cover and those pillowcases up top are from CB2. This is my standing desk and I recently got a printer. I put it on top of a filing cabinet from Wayfair. This is the latest iMac. When I work, I get distracted really easily, so my space needs to be very clean and non-distracting, even in terms of pops of color, clutter, all of that. So everything here is just white. If I was in a more permanent home, I would have invested in shelving up top. Just made it a little bit more like decorative, but because I know that this isn't going to be my permanent home, I just don't feel like investing money or time or wall holes. Partially the reason why all my books are just along this ledge. And then over here are prints that I got recently. I thought I would like them a lot more when I ordered them, but I just can't see it anywhere. I have commitment issues when it comes to artwork. And then and I have a walk-in closet. There's not much to show except that it's messy, so I'll just give you a glimpse. My room overall is really simple and there's not much going on to be honest. I spend most of my time in the living room or the kitchen. That is my entire apartment. Thanks for stopping by and I will see you guys in the next one.